This is a very uh, nice theorem which says a function is of bound, we said every bound monotone function is a bounded variation. It says if a function is a bounded variation, if and only if it is a difference of two monotonically increasing functions. This is the only way functions of bounded variation can arise. So, this is a theorem due to Jordan. So, it characterizes what are functions of bounded variation. That is why, so only to state this result that uh, every uh, monotone function is a bounded variation and conversely bounded variation is a difference of two monotone. Uh, I brought in all those uh, properties. Okay. So, just uh, understand what is the definition, some examples remaining properties just go through once and so that you are exposed to those properties. Okay. So, this is about uh, monotone function. Right. Uh, I think uh, let us start looking at uh, so what kind of uh, functions we looked at? We looked at functions defined on uh, real line or R n, we looked at uh, limits of such functions and continuity of these functions. Then we looked at what are uniformly continuous functions. All these notions were defined on R n, right. You can have continuity, you can have uh, notion of, uh, but let me probably say something about continuity on R n. So, continuity. We proved some properties of continuous functions, namely if f domain is compact then the range also is compact, domain is connected then the range is also connected. But there is some basic uh, differences uh, or uh, which arise, let us let us look at that. So, uh, to understand let me take n equal to 2 because that will uh, highlight everything. So, f is a function defined in a domain in R 2 taking values in R. So, x comma y goes to f of x comma y. Right. So, what was f continuous at a point say a b? So, the definition was for every sequence x n y n belonging to d converging uh, in D, x n y n converging to A B should imply f of x n uh, y n converges to f of A B, right. The limit should exist and should be equal to the value of the function, that is what essentially. In terms of uh, neighborhoods, this was equivalent to saying for every epsilon bigger than 0, there is a delta bigger than 0 such that whenever the distance between uh, x y minus a b is less than delta that should imply f of x y minus f of a b is less than epsilon, right. That was the neighborhood epsilon delta definition corresponding. Whenever x y is are close by distance delta f of x y minus f of a b is close by epsilon. For every epsilon there is a delta, right. So, this we had all seen, this was a continuity and worked very well. Let us, uh, here is a note or a remark. Right. See, so very often one would like to, f is a function of two variables, f d contained in uh, R 2 to R 
x y goes to f of x y. One can fix say y naught belonging to D and consider so y naught is fixed, second coordinate is fixed, first coordinate is varying. So, this goes to f of x comma y naught. Right? In the domain, I fix one of the coordinates and let the other coordinate vary. So, what it looks like, uh, let me draw a picture of the domain. So, this is uh, this is the domain D, right? that is a subset of R2. So, this is uh, oh sorry, this is y and that is x. So, we have fix y naught. So, that means what? So, here is uh, y naught that is fixed, x is varying and f of that is defined. So, we are looking at all x comma y naught in the domain. So, what are all in the picture, what is all such things? So, you are looking at all x so that this is, so this you are looking at this line, right. So, that is all x so that x comma y naught is in the domain and you are looking at the image. So, you are looking this is a function of one variable. One variable, right? X is fixed. Oh, sorry, y y is fixed at y zero, and you are looking at as a function of x, right? And you can also do the other way around. Instead of x naught, you can fix uh, y naught. You can fix some x naught. So you can fix some x naught here. X naught, and look at what happens when uh, you go along this line. Right. So, so one can also fix x naught. Uh, this this doesn't make sense. X naught in D. D is a function of two variables, right? So fix x naught and fix x naught in R, and consider x naught comma y belonging to D. So, look at the function x naught comma y goes to f of x naught comma y. So, along that part of the domain. So, these are called you are fixing one of the coordinates, right. So, for a function of two variables, you can fix either of the variable, either of the coordinate, you get a function of one variable. So, there are two functions of one variable, these are called coordinate functions, are called coordinate functions, fixing one of the coordinate. So, each is a function of a single variable. Now, you can one can ask a question, if I am given a function of two variables which is continuous in the domain D, what are these coordinate functions? They are the same function f, but the domain is restricted along that lines, right. So, is coordinate functions continuous. So, here is a observation. So, note f continuous implies both coordinate functions are also continuous. both coordinate functions are also continuous. Okay. It 
Is it clear why it is so? Obvious because so let us consider one. So fix y not. Then we want to look at x comma y not going to f of x comma uh, x comma y not. I want to check whether this function is continuous or not. Right? Is continuous. Because how do I check? I can do it by sequences. If x n converging to x naught, right? Then what happens to x n comma y naught zero? That converges to x n comma y zero as a sequence in R two, which implies by continuity of f. f of x n y 0 converges to f of x 0 y 0 so this converges to x 0 y 0 and that converges to it right so hence so that is okay so the coordinate functions are continuous so in in fact what we are saying is the following see if okay uh, and if you want to look at the picture so this is the point uh, x0 okay uh, which what is what we have fixed we have fixed y0 so this is uh, y0 fix here so if i take a sequence right xn converging to x0 Then the corresponding sequence in R two will converge to x zero y zero. So the function is continuous. So it will give f of x n y zero converges to right. So that is what we are saying here. So this is this is one co coordinate. This goes to in the domain now. This is in the domain. Right, x n y zero goes to x n y zero in the domain f is continuous, so that implies this. Okay. So, this is note one. Can I say the converse is true? F is a function, so that each coordinate function is continuous. Can I say the function of two variables itself is continuous? So, let us uh, ask the question if. both coordinate functions are continuous can we say f itself is continuous the answer is no no in general that means what you can construct functions such that their coordinate functions are continuous okay but the function is not continuous okay so uh, try uh, let me for the time being leave it as an exercise okay in two variables so that when you fix one of the variables the function is continuous fix the other variable still the function is continuous but uh, jointly this function is not continuous okay so for that let me also give you some more inputs so that uh, you are able to do so let me write 3 right so let us take a function f in a domain d in r2 to r f continuous of course continuity is continuity at a point right we are not looking at continuity of the whole domain We're saying if f is continuous at a point then both coordinate functions are also continuous at that point right conversely we said no the function 
so both coordinate functions may be continuous at a point x0, y0 when x0 y0 are fixed independently, but jointly the function may not be continuous at that point x0. So, let us say continuous at a x0, y0. So, let me draw a picture again here and here is the domain and here is the point x0, y0. We are saying the function is continuous at this point, right. So, what does continuity say? It says, so here is the uh, where it is going. So, here is the value at f at x0, y0. Now, what does continuity say? Continuity says given a neighborhood of, right, epsilon neighborhood of the point value there is a delta neighborhood of okay so there is a delta neighborhood of this size that whenever i take a point inside if i take a point inside here it value goes inside here right so we can think of this domain this is the right and the value goes here so that is continuity If you look at the sequential thing, whenever a sequence converges to this point x0, y0, so if a sequence x n, y n is converging to x0, y0, it is going to come inside that domain, right? And hence it will come inside this. That is the equivalence of the sequential definition and the epsilon delta. But so the point is, how does the sequence x0, y0 approach this point x0, y0? How does the sequence x n, y n approach? In the real line, you can approach a point from the left or from the right, but in R2, for example, you can approach why you can go along any line through that point or you can go along a zigzag path going through it, right. So, it should mean whichever way you approach the point, the corresponding values come should come closer, right. So, another way of saying that would be. So, uh, let me just write continuity means what implies continuity at x0, y0 okay? uh, means I can make it more, more precise means for every path in D, for every path in D uh, going through x0, y0, the corresponding values along this path, there is too much of English, but it is very easy to understand. Along this path, approach f of x0, y0. Let me just draw a picture of this and a bigger picture, so that you understand what I am saying. So, here is the domain and here is the point x0, y0 and this is the value at the point f of x0, y0. So, continuity says, suppose I approach this point x0, y0 along this path. So, this is a path you can call it as G. Okay. Keep on the, um, the picture. So, what I am saying is, I am going to approach this point along this path. In the real line, you can approach only from left and from right. So, here I can approach this point along this path. So, I will take a, I can take a sequence if you like going along this path to this point. So, x n, y n. So, this is the, so I am going to this. Then the corresponding values should come closer to the value f of x naught y naught. So, let us uh, why this thing is useful. So, let me look at an example probably to illustrate this. Okay. 
So let us look at the function f of x y is defined as let me write x plus y divided by x minus y. Now x minus y is in the denominator, so I should remove right x not equal to y. Is it okay? So, what is the domain of this function? Where is this function defined? It is defined at all points x, y belonging to R2 such that x is not equal to y. So, what is x is equal to y? That is a line. So, at the domain of this, okay. So, I should remove that line. So, this line is not part of the y equal to x. Right on this line, except on this line, everything else function is defined. I want to know, can I? So this function is not defined at zero zero. So f zero zero is not defined, right? It is not defined because the line y equal to x passes through it. Question is, can we define? some value to f at 0, 0, so that the function becomes is continuous at 0, 0, so that the function becomes continuous. At 0, 0, it is not defined, right. Function, if I want to say a function is defined at 0, 0 also and continuous, so what should I do? I should look at the limit of the function at that point and if the limit exists, that should be the value of the function at that point, right. So the question is, does this function have a limit? So the question limit x y going to 0, 0, f x y exists or not. So, what is f of x y? So, that is x minus y, x plus y divided by x minus y, x not equal to y. I am looking at limit of this at 0, 0. Now, if the limit at this point is to exist at 0, 0, then what should happen? Then whatever path I take going to 0, 0, right? If I take a sequence say x n y n going to 0, 0, then f of that should have some value, whichever the path may be I, along this path or along this path, along this path or whichever way I want to go, right. So let us try to test it for some nice paths. Let us take a path like this, which is a line through the origin. So let us approach the point 0, 0 along a line other than y equal to x because at y equal to x it is not defined. So, what so let us take a line. So, consider f x y along. So, what is the equation of some other line y equal to m of x, x not equal to 0, of course, 0 is not defined. Then, what is the value of the function f of x, comma? Along this line, what is the function? Y is m of x. So, x plus m of x divided by x minus m of x. And what is that? So, that is 1 plus m divided by 1 minus m, right. So, let us assume m is not equal to 1. So, I am taking the line where m is not equal to 1, of course, right. This is a line y equal to m of x anyway. So, along this line, the function always is a constant. So, limit will exist, right. So, along every line, the limit exists. But the, so let us write that first, what is the observation. So, along 
y equal to m m x limit x going to 0 f of x comma m of x is equal to 1 plus m divided by 1 minus m that is a constant function. Now, if the limit at 0 0 has to exist that limit should be independent of the path right left limit in the real line should be same as the right limit. So, here it depends on m. So, this limit exists along every path the every line passing through 0 0, but limit is different. So, limit at 0 0 does not exist, but this depends on m. Hence, limit x y going to 0 0 f of x y does not exist. Right? So, for this function the limit along 0 0. So, I cannot define this function in any way to make it continuous. So, the important thing is the path in R 2, R 3, R n there are more than one right in real line only left and right possible things are there, but in R 2, R n there are infinite number of ways. So, it should not depend upon. So, how is this useful? To prove that the function is not continuous, if we can show it along two different paths the values are different then the function will not be continuous. So, that is continuity in R 2 or similarly in R 3 clear. So, coordinate function continuous implies. So, what are coordinate functions? When you are fixing one coordinate, you are going vertically or horizontally that is the path you are going right. When you are fixing say y naught, the y naught is fixed now. So, you are going horizontally y coordinate is fixed. So, you are moving horizontally x coordinate vertically only, but not only that it should be along every path right. So, no wonder that coordinate functions continuous need not imply continuity of the function jointly of the two variables. So, many times we tend to push the problem on one variable in the sense that to check a function is continuous in two variable, if you can show it is not continuous in one variable fix then it is not continuous jointly also. So, these are necessary conditions continuity in each variable is necessary for a function to be continuous, but not sufficient right. But necessary things are always useful proving something is not that right it's clear. Okay. So, let us uh, I think uh, only 2 minutes left. So, let me stop that here. So, next time we will start looking at uh, differentiability of functions. Okay? Right. <laughs>